this video, we're going to cover fatty acid catabolism, looking at how fatty acids are oxidized to acetyl-CoA to yield energy. In part one, we covered how triacylglycerols are mobilized and how fatty acids are released and transported into mitochondria. So now let's move on to the oxidation of fatty acids. So by the end of this video, you'll understand the process of beta oxidation, how the electrons extracted from these fatty acids travel to the electron transport chain and produce ATP. In the end, we'll calculate the overall ATP yield per beta oxidation cycle. Now before we break down beta oxidation, let's quickly recap the process of transporting fatty acids to the mitochondria. So the reason why we need to transport fatty acids into the mitochondrial matrix is because the enzymes involved in fatty acid oxidation is found within the mitochondrial matrix. And before we transport fatty acids into mitochondria, we first need to activate the fatty acid. So we combine fatty acid and CoA to produce fatty acyl CoA. And then we substitute CoA for carnitine and it passes through the intermembrane space and enters the matrix through the carnitine co-transporter. And in the final step, the fatty acyl group is transferred to coenzyme A. So we're placing the CoA back. So now that we have the fatty acids in the mitochondrial matrix, it's going to undergo beta oxidation. It's called beta oxidation because we are breaking the bond between alpha and the beta carbon. So carbon 2 and carbon 3 of the fatty acid during each cycle. So let's use an example. So we have palmitoyl CoA, which is a 16 carbon chain. This is the alpha carbon and beta carbon, and oxidation involves breaking the bond between alpha and beta carbon during each cycle. And it involves the removal of successive two carbon units in the form of acetyl CoA, beginning from the carboxyl end of the fatty acid. So for each cycle of beta oxidation, we're going to be removing two carbon units in the form of acetyl-CoA. So for each cycle, we're going to be shortening the fatty acid by two carbons. Now fatty acid oxidation can be broken down into three stages. The first stage is beta oxidation, where the fatty acid is broken down to produce acetyl-CoA. Then in the second stage, acetyl-CoA enters the citric acid cycle. And in the last stage, the electrons we capture are transported to the electron transport chain to drive ATP synthesis. So now let's subtract complexity and break down beta oxidation, or the first stage of fatty acid oxidation. So beta oxidation is the removal of successive two carbon units in the form of acetyl-CoA proceeding from the carboxyl end of the fatty acid. For each cycle of beta oxidation, it has four steps. Okay, so let's go through this. So here's palmitoyl CoA, a 16 carbon fatty acid, and I've highlighted the acetyl group here so you can see how it's removed. In the first step, palmitoyl CoA is converted to enol CoA by adding a double bond between the alpha and beta carbon. This is a dehydrogenation reaction catalyzed by acyl CoA dehydrogenase. In this reaction, FAD is reduced to FADH2. And FADH2 is an important electron carrier. So it's going to carry these electrons to the electron transport chain, donate it to the final electron acceptor oxygen to drive ATP synthesis. And so here we've produced trans delta 2 enol CoA. So the triangle, okay, delta, tells you where the double bond is. And the trans in front of the name tells you that the double bond is in a trans configuration. Then in the second step, enol-CoA is converted to beta hydroxy acyl coa In this step, we're going to be adding water to the double bond. So this is a hydration reaction catalyzed by the enzyme enol-CoA hydratase. Then in the next step, it's going to be another dehydrogenation reaction to form beta ketoacyl CoA. In this reaction, NAD plus accepts the electrons and is reduced to NADH. So then NADH, another important electron carrier, is going to transfer these electrons to the electron transport chain. And the enzyme catalyzing this reaction is beta hydroxyacyl CoA dehydrogenase. So remember, when you hear dehydrogenase involved, it should signal to you that NAD plus is involved. 
and in this reaction, NAD plus is reduced to NADH. Okay, and then in the last step of the beta oxidation cycle, we're going to be removing the acetyl CoA. So, free CoA, we have free CoA here, is going to bind to the fatty acid, forming fatty acyl CoA. So, now it's two carbon units shorter. And this is catalyzed by acyl CoA acetyl transferase. And now we have just completed one cycle of beta oxidation. We've removed two carbon units in the form of acetyl CoA. So now we're left with a 14 carbon chain because we've removed two carbon atoms in the first cycle and the process is going to repeat itself. So for one cycle of beta oxidation, we're going to be removing two carbon units in the form of acetyl CoA. And so the cycle, the process is going to repeat itself, removing two carbon units per cycle in the form of acetyl CoA. So let's summarize what we have produced. So for one cycle of beta oxidation, we produced one molecule of acetyl CoA and also two pairs of electrons in the form of 1FADH2 and 1ADH. And remember that FADH2 is equivalent to 1.5 molecules of ATP and NADH is equivalent to 2.5 molecules of ATP. So just keep that in mind when we calculate the ATP yield later. Okay, so that's the first stage of fatty acid oxidation. Before we move on to the second stage of fatty acid oxidation, let's quickly summarize beta oxidation. Okay, so beta oxidation involves four steps. And this is the removal of successive two carbon units in the form of acetyl CoA. And we're proceeding from the carboxyl end of the fatty acid. So we used palmitoyl CoA as an example. It's a 16 carbon fatty acid. In the first step, palmitoyl CoA is turned into enol CoA and FAD is reduced to FADH2. And then FADH2 is going to transfer these electrons to the electron transport chain to drive ATP synthesis. And then from enol CoA, we're going to convert that to beta hydroxy acyl CoA. So we've added water to the double bond. And then in the next step, we're going to form beta ketoacyl CoA. So in this reaction, NAD plus accepts the electrons and is reduced to NADH. And similar to FADH2, NADH is going to transfer the electrons to the electron transport chain to drive ATP synthesis. And then in the last step of beta oxidation, of the beta oxidation cycle, we're going to be removing the acetyl CoA. So free CoA comes in here, binds to the fatty acid. Now it's two carbon units shorter and we formed fatty acyl CoA and acetyl CoA. And now we have just completed one cycle of beta oxidation. So for one cycle of beta oxidation, we've produced one molecule of acetyl CoA, one FADH2 and one NADH. And so now we're left with a 14 carbon chain. And so now the process is going to repeat itself, removing two carbon units every cycle in the form of acetyl CoA. Now, to determine how many cycles of beta oxidation the fatty acid will go through, take the carbon number, so in this case, palmitoyl CoA is a 16 carbon chain, divide that by 2 and minus 1. So, palmitoyl CoA, a 16 carbon chain, is going to go through seven cycles of beta oxidation. So that is the first step of fatty acid oxidation. So now let's move on to the second stage of fatty acid oxidation where the acetyl CoA produced in beta oxidation enters the citric acid cycle. Now if you haven't seen the citric acid cycle lecture, go ahead and do that because we're not going to be going over the cycle in this lecture. Okay, so for one acetyl CoA that enters the citric acid cycle, we produce 3NADH, which is a 7.5 ATP equivalent. And we produced 1FADH2, which is 1.5 ATP equivalent, and 1GTP, which is converted to ATP. Now, GTP and ATP are energetically equivalent. So that's a total of 10 ATP per acetyl CoA that enters and is oxidized in the citric acid cycle. But remember, we produced 8 acetyl CoA in beta oxidation, so when we oxidized palmitoyl CoA. So then our total here is 80 ATP from 8-acetyl-CoA that is entering the citric acid cycle. 
So that's the second stage of fatty acid oxidation. The acetyl-CoA that we've produced in beta oxidation enters the cycle. So now let's move on to the third stage of fatty acid oxidation, and that is the transportation of electrons or the transfer of electrons that we've captured to the electron transport chain. So remember that Phymotol-CoA undergoes seven cycles of beta oxidation, so we generated 7 NADH and 7 FADH2. So our total ATP from NADH and FADH2 combined is 28. Okay, so now let's calculate the total ATP yield from a 16 carbon fatty acid chain. And our total ATP yield is 108. So that is fatty acid oxidation. In this lecture, we learned that fatty acid oxidation can be broken down into three stages. So the first stage is beta oxidation, where we're oxidizing the fatty acids to yield acetyl-CoA, and beta oxidation has four steps per cycle, and it's going to be removing two carbon units in the form of acetyl-CoA. And then in the second stage, the acetyl-CoA we've produced in beta oxidation is going to enter the citric acid cycle. And in the third stage, this is where the electrons we've captured is going to transfer it to the electron transport chain to drive ATP synthesis. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to EKG Science so you don't miss a single lecture. And remember, subtract complexity and slow down. To study the next lecture, simply click the next video or you can view the entire metabolism playlist. Hey, stop procrastinating!